Hello and welcome to Take On Tech, your favorite tech show where we always keep you informed on all matters technology. Today we went for an event on Africa's Climate Summit and we want to see how technology comes in to solve climate problems. In this event we met with the CEO of Africa Arena and the startups as well as investors. This is a show that you definitely want to be a part of. Remember to, to use the hashtag Take on Tech at KBC Channel 1 to interact with us. My name is Stephanie Ayeta and again this is Take on Tech. In our tech news today, plans are underway to lay 100,000 kilometers of high-speed internet cables, especially to remote areas in Kenya's digital transformation program. Due to modern silage methods, dairy farmers are getting between 17 liters to 40 liters of milk from high-yielding breeds. And lastly, the government has trained close to 400,000 youth in semi-skilled and skilled digital jobs, creating 139,000 online jobs. Plans are underway to lay 100,000 kilometers of high-speed internet cables, especially to remote areas in Kenya's digital transformation program. This is to ensure that the high-speed broadband capacity availed by the six undersea fiber optic cables connecting Kenya to the rest of the world are tapped for income generation by Kenyans as well as service delivery by both public and private institutions. The high-speed internet capacity is set to improve. We have sufficient connectivities across our cities. We have connections that support the city urban development and also connectivity to the rural areas. We are, we've had engagement with our private sector and we aim to increase the current broadband connectivity from about 1.2 currently to add another 2 million in the short run and in the long run achieve 8.5 million home connections. In addition, production of smartphones locally and innovative ways of financing smart devices are among ways to reduce the cost of devices. Engineer Tanui says the government is keen to empower Kenyans to tap opportunities online, given its immense impact on the economy. He says the plan is to push internet connections from the current 1.2 million to 8 million home connections. The digital economy is growing so fast. It's actually growing 2.5 times faster than the physical economy and that's the data for the last 10 years. This is a space we as a country needs to grow and encourage participation of many. Currently, day farmers with high yielding breeds get between 17 liters to 40 liters of milk per day with silage. How is this possible? Technology is enabling them to get quality feeds and make their storage easier. This is silage bale wrapping. Silage is a modern way of farming that is high yielding. The silage is wrapped in quality material to guarantee freshness, a process that happens in minutes. As we see here, we are doing silage baling, that is silage packaging. Our silage bailing we bail in a capacity of 350 bells, kilos per bell, and it is a maize corn silage. AgriAssist is one of the proprietors supplying farmers with this technology. After maturity of the maize plant and consequent harvesting, a pit is dug and filled to the brim with chopped maize plants into a lamb known as a bunker. Then, a tractor scoops preserved silage from the bunker and loads it into this bailing machine. This machine scoops silage from its intake, measures and shifts the silage, packs it into huge rolls, wraps them using special high-quality polythene paper and finally rolls it to the ground. You see now the material also is imported. Of course everything here is imported but we are bringing this technology also to Kenyans so that they can improve. 
Through this computerized control unit, this machine can package silage that has already been done in pits or direct from the farms. The machine's control unit is in charge of all the commands necessary for the operations of the process. The ready silage bales are kept at a safe corner, ready for transport to various locations depending on orders from dairy farmers. Depending on orders from dairy farmers. We are advising farmers when we are feeding our our dairy cows. Yeah. We also advise on the balanced ration, where silage, dairy meal, and other supplements are important. Unlike previously, when silage was made manually or using makeshift machines and would be affected by heat, bad weather, poor storage, leading to spoilage, bale silage can last for over two years in good state. The baling machine packs the silage in bales weighing between 350 and 400 kg. According to silage experts, the bale wrapping system was introduced in the mid-1980s. Wrapping silage is already practiced in several developed countries like Netherlands, where it has helped farmers feed their herds in an easy and cost-effective manner. <music> Early this year, the government announced it has trained close to 400,000 youth in semi-skilled and skilled digital jobs, creating 139,000 online jobs. But this figure is set to grow, especially when focusing on specific high-skilled and digital jobs. We are going to work with our parliamentary, we have the chairman here, we are going to work with our leadership uh, in the government to ensure the digital space in Kenya is expanded. It has huge opportunities to create jobs for our youth. As we speak right now, uh, in the plan that is there is to have an establishment of 1,450 digital innovation hubs that are going to be co-created between members of parliament using the NGCDF and support from the Ministry of the ICT and Digital Economy. Speaking during a tour of Amazon Web Services Development Center, ICT PS John Tanui pointed to the benefits of devolving digital jobs to the counties through technical training institutions. We are going to work with Amazon and other tech companies to enhance our skilling so that we work with our TVET institution, our universities, our digital hubs that we are building across the country to ensure that the skilling is done for this high-tech space, for data analytics, uh, cloud computing um, uh, professions, uh, cyber security. Where Kenya is at the moment, some of these issues might be seen as challenges, but we who are in this sector are seeing them as opportunities. The challenges of the youth bulge the challenges of uh, youth engagement in meaningful areas of employment, they present as uh, generational challenges for this country. In the semi-skilled and skilled digital job sector, the government is constructing and equipping Jitumi ICT hubs in constituencies across the country and installing them with internet connectivity. With the creation of a digital job strategy, centers like this Hope that it will invite the future of the youth in Kenya into the digital job ecosystem. The Africa Climate Tech Week Summit that was held a week ago was an important platform for discussions on how technology and innovation can drive solutions to the present climate challenges facing Africa. The summit brought together stakeholders from government, businesses, innovators, NGOs, and international organizations, all dedicated to finding practical and scalable technological solutions to mitigate climate change impact on the continent. The event showcased 21 top African startups, each pitching their business ideas in hopes of attracting one of their 100 investors in attendance. Six startups were recognized as award winners in different categories. These were Best Clean Tech Startup Award, Best Climate Tech Startup Award, Best Agri Tech Startup Award, 
best circular economy startup award most promising entrepreneur and best investor pitch award you need a lot of things to be successful you need capital of course you need opportunity to work with corporates or clients find clients but you also need skills and you need to interact with fellow entrepreneurs and people in the ecosystem to constantly grow um, so we provide a platform that you know, essentially uh, gives access to all of that. So when we do an event like here in Kenya, it's not just uh, a two-day summit. Uh, it's also uh, a lot of side events. So last weekend we were in the Nairobi National Park with the 22 founders that we selected for this event. And we prepared them through an investment readiness weekend intensive program, boot camp, uh, for this uh, event and how they're going to interact with over 50 investors that are present here to make some deals and create some opportunities. Um, the fact that we are constantly doing that digitally, so the startup pitching here, it's streamed online, it's available on YouTube, on our mobile apps, a lot of investors access our digital platforms. So we are putting them on showcase in person, physically at this event, but also digitally throughout uh, the year and via our network of over 800 investors. So this is how we help uh, founders by showcasing them and creating the right opportunities for them. During the summit, various climate tech solutions, including renewable energy, smart agriculture, water conservation technologies, and waste management innovations were showcased. My name is Hon Jung Park, uh, CEO of Solarino, a Korean company, a uh, startup of developing uh, desalination and water purification in small scale. We are using uh, technology which does not use the, the reverse osmosis membrane, but we use electro, electro static force to capture the ions in the water. So it uses less energy, and also it is, does, has less maintenance cost because we do not need to replace reverse osmosis, osmosis membrane. And it's very easy to uh, assemble because everything is modulized, so it can be easily assembled. So uh, what I want to do is that I want to have some uh, deploying this one in Africa because this one is especially useful for, that, uh, for removing uh, fluoride, arsenic, heavy metals and salt. And in African continent, there are so many contamination in uh, fluoride, especially fluoride, because fluoride is difficult to remove in the reverse, reverse osmosis. And also the salt, uh, the salt is seawater is intruded inside of the inland and the borehole water could be contaminated by the salt. So for people's drinking, you need to um, desalinate, removing out the salt. These innovations are aimed at reducing carbon emissions, improving resource efficiency and enhancing sustainability across Africa. Major focus was on how agri-tech innovations such as drones, Satellite monitoring and precision agriculture are helping farmers adapt to changing climate conditions. These technologies improve productivity, reduce waste, and help manage climate risks, ensuring food security in vulnerable regions. There were significant discussions on unlocking climate financing for Africa. We want to make sure that it's, there's, a, there's a digital impact with it, there's sustainable finance with the solutions that um, these fintechs are building. It's not, um, like I mentioned when we're speaking, it, about um, not building in isolation. Some of the fintechs, they don't have the right um, resources or information as to how they're supposed to innovate with their product. So sometimes they forget the part where they have to be compliant and, and there's no, they don't have the right policy to actually use to build that product. So, when they are key stakeholders or ecosystem enablers who are putting them in the same room with you know, the government and the investors, that's where we come in to make sure that you know, they have a standing foundation when it comes to innovating products um, within the ecosystem. Private sector investors, development partners and governments explored how funds can be mobilized to support climate-related startups and initiatives. The summit emphasized the need for innovative financial models to scale climate tech solutions. The summit also highlighted the role of young entrepreneurs in climate action. Initiatives and startup led by African youth focusing on sustainable businesses and green technology were celebrated. Programs supporting capacity building, 
mentorship and investment in youth-led solutions are today being promoted as critical for driving Africa's green transition. People maybe don't fully grasp is that Africa is about to grow very quickly. So there's about 8 billion people on earth right now. In 75 years, there'll be about 10 billion, but almost half of them will be in Africa. So Africa is about to double in size as the world continues to grow. And historically, Africa hasn't consumed that much energy. We haven't consumed that much meat. That's going to change. So Africa is about to grow in terms of population. It's also about to consume. And what we do know from the last 75 years across the planet is that when our population grows and consumes in a traditional model, that's very bad for the environment. It creates a lot of carbon and that's been a real negative. It's been good for people, but bad for the planet. So what we're trying to get people's head around is that you have to work on Africa if you care about the global climate conversation because we're about to grow and we're about to consume, but we need to do so in a way that's different and the, how the rest of the world did it. And that's a huge innovation opportunity, but we do need more people working on that problem. Policymakers also discussed the regulatory frameworks needed to support climate tech innovations. The summit emphasized the importance of creating enabling environments through supportive policies that encourage investment in renewable energy, sustainable agriculture, and green businesses. Multi-sectoral collaboration is seen as key to success in climate tech adoption. Governments, private sector players and international organizations explore partnership opportunities to strengthen Africa's climate resilience. Case studies of successful climate tech applications from various African countries were presented, demonstrating how innovative solutions are already helping communities adapt to climate change. This included solar-powered irrigation systems, eco-friendly construction technologies, and digital platforms for environmental conservation. The Africa Climate Tech Week Summit sets the stage for actionable climate solutions with a focus on harnessing African innovation, fostering collaboration, and ensuring sustainable development for the continent amid the global climate crisis. Clearly, we see that Africa needs to step up when it comes to coming up with solutions to climate change because as we increase, then the demand increases because we do not want to hurt the planet. We have seen innovations in this space and what people are doing in the climate space using technology. What are your thoughts on this? Talk to us at KBC Channel 1 using the hashtag Take on Tech. My name is Stephanie Ayeta. I will see you next week, same time, same place with yet another exciting show. Till then, let's keep it tech. Adios.